It's Jane. How are you? Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to do some more incredible inking, I think, but <laughs> I finally can say hello. I've got the other camera to do at least this much. Uh, yes, the, uh, I'm up here in the corner. This is craziness. But anyway, I'm staying alive. I've got my Pink Floyd t-shirt on and we'll just pop back to the art, I think. <laughs> Hi Jenny, I'm Jenny. How are you going? So when I was creating, uh, when was that? It wasn't yesterday, was it the day before? Whenever it was. Uh, incredible ink, building up this bright background, mainly warm, going into the cool colours. Everything's dry now and I just wanted to work over some really intense inks because I do have they're little challenges, you know, everything has its own foible. So with acrylic, once it's dry, it's set, that's it, done. Watercolour, once it's dry, it's watercolour, you add water, it's going to lift. Some colours more than others, it depends on the paper, it depends on how long it's been sitting there, it depends on the weather, uh, but you can lift uh, some colours. Uh, and with inks like this. These are the incredible inks but any of my water soluble inks like what we're getting here. Uh, these are Gods and Monsters. This is Legends of the Sea. Just I'm grabbing some little different examples of different inks. So not tattoo ink. We're not talking about that one. And maybe so let's grab a bit of creative juice. So any of these types of inks have dye as part of their makeup and a pigment based ink is more something alike something that's waterproof or usually has uh, different properties so like that's not the best example but like um, tattoo ink that sort of thing the thing with dye based inks or dye based anything is the colors are amazing and these are the party girls. These are the, these are the inks that bring life to the page. The thing with the dye is that it might not have the longevity, especially under sunlight. Well, nothing survives in sunlight. Um, not us. Not you know. We discolor <laughs> in the sunlight. If you're there for too long, you go past the tan, and then you go. Uh, well, depending on your skin, but you know, you get it can break down the skin eventually. It's the sun is strong is all I'm trying to say. It even can break down rocks over time. So um, we don't display art light in where it can get sun. You can, everything's going to fade with that. But over time, the colours might lessen in intensity. Now, my view on that is who cares? I'm working in a journal and the chances of that are happening are limited. Uh, the other thing is everything changes over time. Um, it is what it is. If I want to keep a perfect record of a, a group of colours, uh, then I, and that might be, especially with anything natural, uh, any natural based plant dyes, that sort of thing, they can be very uh, ephemeral. The joy is in using them is the main thing. And then... <laughs> Uh, preserving them. If you became a super famous artist and your stuff was in the Louvre or in the the Memo or something spectacular, there are conservationists, conservators, and they will work out how to conserve your art. Don't, so you don't have to worry about it. That's my view. So use what you want. Do what you want. If you want to use the neon pinks, well then you do that. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so there are things we can do to um, make it easier to work on top of some of these very alive creatures. They, they're alive, they're alive. This is what makes them so beautiful. One of the things you can do is freeze them in time. So you can use a spray fixative. Uh, I prefer, and that has alcohol in it usually, like with, uh, it's got a propellant. And that is, rather than putting water in it, so when it hits this, a lot of water-soluble things can't even see alcohol. They just don't even know what's on them and happening. But that delivers the acrylic or whatever the ingredient is that's going to freeze the stuff. 
and the alcohol evaporates off much quicker than water and the water can react. So we can have a little bit of a reaction. Uh, you can use that. But the alcohol changes the pH balance of the artwork and it make. I don't like working on top of alcohol sometimes. Working with alcohol, sure. But not on top of it. <laughs> so uh, let's do some other things. So number one, we just use it as it is, knowing exactly what's going to happen. So we will do that as well. But I thought I would also just, this is another little thing we can do. Will some of the paint come alive and bleed? Sure. Not the drawing that I've done because I did that with tattoo ink. But because I've used incredible inks, this is part of what's so nice about them, is they are semi-layerable. So yes, if I add enough water, they will start to lift and move. Look here, see you can see, or where there's a thicker application, I'll get a little bit of bleeding. On a background like this, that is random and colours everywhere, a little bit of bleeding on this is not going to make any difference. Some colours are going to uh, resuscitate more than others. But if I put a little quick light layer of the collage medium, which is a matte medium, over the top of this, that is going to freeze it. I'm no longer going to be working on the ink, I'm going to be working on the collage medium. And see, I'm getting a little bit of bleeding. It's mainly the pink. Pinks, reds, yellows, these are the warmer colours are the ones that tend to resuscitate. They're a bit more alive. The colours of the blood, you see. Just remember that. So even here where it's sitting, because it is a liquid, so it's when we say it's water reactive, it's not just water to reactive, it's liquid reactive. This is a liquid. I have been playing around with... Um, putting the matte medium in some water to make a spray. And this is, instead of using, um, you know, like a pastel fixative, and this works, um, but it depends on the sprayer itself. So you get a little bit of a mottled effect. It's a little bit hard for me to show you in here, but if I get the angle, can you see just here? See how there's a little bit of a mottling? This is a scrapbook paper under here. Uh, it's unvarnished, but it does have a surface just because of the way of just printing. So it's not going to absorb into the paper itself so much. It's going to dry off before it absorbs. So you're going to get, depending on what you're putting it on, you're going to get a little bit of a different effect. But I've used that all throughout this little book over the top of um, This Is Layer Cake. And I've put it on quite thickly in some, like here in some spots. And this is working really, really well. Um, but if it's fixative is a good idea over lots of different art supplies. In fact, with an art journal, when I've finished it, I go through and do a little bit of fixative at the very end because, like I said, I find that it does change the, the way the paper reacts to watercolour and other things. So I tend to leave it to the very, very end and uh, of a journal's, um, like when I finished it, and or at least until the paper's covered up, you know what I mean? So I could give this a little hit of this, uh, of the matte medium. I've got layers of gouache on here, of ink, all sorts of other things. If I wanted to keep working on top, on top, but I don't need to. So I wouldn't do something like that over something that I've already nearly finished. What I would do is maybe add whatever other finishing touches I was going to add and then do a matte fixative if I wanted to, right? A spray varnish. I haven't got any here at my desk with me, uh, but you can even use cheap hairspray, as long as it doesn't have oils, conditioners, that sort of thing. Um, okay. Uh, Jenny says she's pulled out all her inks and walked around with a blue nose for a day without really... <laughs> um, Jenny says, will that stop it fading? It's Nothing's really going to stop uh, your work from fading. There are UV varnishes you can get for stuff that goes outside. I've got rocks that I've painted with UV acrylics and varnishes and all of that. They've all faded. Um, there's nothing that can stop that. So to, it's an unrealistic expectation, in my opinion, because the sun gets everything. Mind you, I live in Australia and it's bright here, you know. So, but these, these are in the shade, they're on the veranda, they're just hand-painted things that I've 
got and yeah they've come totally faded markers that are meant to be completely archival they're very expensive blah 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 totally faded but that's fine it's okay I can always resuscitate you know redo them a little bit if needed but so what I'm talking about, we're in journals, so when sunlight's not getting in here. Um, and for me, the joy is in creating it. And if I really want to keep things in their pristine condition, I can do a scan or a photograph and then print that out if I want to, right? But any watercolour that you buy, any original art with things, they all have the... Anything can fade, um, no matter what things tell you. I've seen it, so I know. Uh, and that's life. We all fade over time. Um, even archival inks, you know, like with printers that are tested to a very high thing, they still only have archival things of 100 years, but that's not actual, you know, it's, it's just scientifically, t you know, if ex accelerated tested. It's not because we haven't had them for that long. So anyway, all of that to let that dry. <laughs> My point being, don't, I just wouldn't even worry about that kind of thing. Uh, with mixed media, just use whatever you like and enjoy what it is that you are creating. That's, that's my philosophy. And um, if people are displaying something, if you're selling original artwork, just tell people you can't have it in sunlight. Just if you're getting morning light, direct light on it, that's just too much. Anything will fade everything just you can't have light on it sunlight even indirect light it's like a plant that gets the wrong kind of light doesn't like it shrivels up and won't grow or dies you know well that work won't die but it won't like it so while that dries a little bit more we'll just let that gap bone dry I suppose it's not a good idea I'll hold this then well actually I just I grabbed my layer cake because out of habit I guess <laughs> but I might I'll have a smaller one seeing as I'm going to hand hold it I'll have my two little travel palettes of my layer cake there but I've also got this little creature so this is um, I showed you this the other day it's my fungus the boogeyman watercolor palette and um, hey Pam how are you going hey Emma Oh, last day of holidays, lovely. Okay. So, this is gouache. Go, go, gouache. So proud of myself. Just used up a whole tube. This is my go, go, gouache. It's very nice and creamy and thick. And I've I put a little bit of that in each pan. This has got a little magnet on the back. And I just added a few drops of the incredible ink. And... Um, yeah, just made up a little set of coloured pastel paint, little pastel gouaches. And uh, what's fabulous, <laughs> the closest other thing I have is my welcome mats. And of course you can mix colours, but all the colours are different. So I might use those too, but they're different formulas really, different types of paint, but it's opaque watercolour. So let's, I might go for a really contrasting colour. So we need to activate this. And as you can see, it cracks. This is why you don't find gouache in pans because it does this and it looks ugly. People think that it's um, broken maybe or that it's too ugly to entertain. Uh, like ugly fruit, you know, no one wants it even though it's perfectly delicious. It's just a bit untractable. Same thing, it's just little, it's not as attractive as, as uh, a nice smooth pan, but it works perfectly beautifully, but I do just, uh, gouache always need to activate it a little. So we've got one little face here, and I'm going to, why I'm starting with blue I don't know, but I think the colour will look nice on here. I started putting a bit of water well, here's a little bit of a face here. I don't, they don't have to be together. They have to be sisters or twins. Um, oh, look at this colour. Now, this is going to have to work hard to stay blue over the top of this because liquid is going to activate a little bit, especially those warm colours. But that's just the first... 
Let's just see how turned that face is. This is the first little Oh, I love her little fringe. Oh, I like that. Okay. Oh, I love it. Right. Well, I'm going to just go straight into that with my which pen. I might go Yo Ho Ho. And oh, that's not going to be dark enough. So what did I use here? This might be my new one that I just mixed up. So that's Kitsun. This is Shiver Me Timbers. Where's the one I just made? That was the one I made. So I mixed some, uh, yes, that's it. I mixed some of these together. The Incredible Inks, so it's Hot Cocoa and Berry Licious to make a little mixture. What's going on here? Too many pens. I kind of like this little scaled fringe. So we're just going to let that be. I might even accentuate that. Oh, I like these longer ones here. Maybe I'll bend those so it looks like it's some sort of little fringe. And let that blue settle in. I might come back in with another because I do like this blue over the top of it. Colour Addict. And with my brush, I don't stab, stab, stab. I brush, brush, brush. I'll damage my brush in the end and not really do it much for the paint either. So I'm stroking it and saying, come on, love, up we get. And get it nice and creamy. Oh, yum, these colours. And just because I just know that these colours are going to look beautiful on here, might need a couple of layers. And I might go into, so this is fresh air. This is Mermaid's Tail. That's this one. And if I put Mermaid's Tail on this, it'll just look like a dark blob because I've got opposite colours. I'll show you. It'll just look black. Um, but because I've got the gouache in here, that has the white opacity. So that's going to uh, give it a little bit of holding strength on top of this colour that will still sink in a little bit because we're talking opposite so for me to get a turquoise to sit up over this it does have to have some flotation devices and that is what opacity will give us it's a little bit of flotation uh, and then we can always come back and do a little second layer which will be floating on top of the you know, flotation devices all about the flotation and and because I added that little bit of ink and then spread it out and I'm just I'm dipping back into it so I'm giving this a little bit more of a variation and just the juiciness of the cool color on the warm color yeah And I'm just going to, because it's right here in my peripheral vision, I want a bit of this. Oh, it's raining outside, big time. This is sea urchin from the sushi uh, layer cake. And this is in that gouache family with the opacity. Uh, but it's just, it's a different formula that I've got. So it doesn't crack. Um, and it's just it's in that little water soluble family of delicious creatures. But it's going again, it's going to have to work pretty hard to 
be able to sit up on top of that and oh, I need to really let that dry. Because I've got this in my brush, should I add a little bit connect that down here? Why not? I'll let the colours connect the pages. I can let them live as single two different things as they're in a journal. Do you think of how the pages, can, do you work as a spread or do you work, sometimes I do like them to connect together because you are looking at them all at once. They don't have to be completely related but I am going to pop a little bit of this colour on here. Now without the matte medium, which isn't completely dry but it should be alright. Uh, we're here, I'll show you. That all has matte. I did the whole page, didn't I? If I put, put that over here, see how the, that, the really intense red just eats it up. So I'd have to really get it activated and do a couple of layers to, to get it to um, sit on top of that. Totally doable. I can also um, um, uh, use acrylic, but again, that will still eat it up because this is it's just the way of things. So if you've got that type of thing happening uh, with an ink that just it won't settle, it just keeps gobbling up every colour you put on top of it, that's when freezing it, freezing it is a good idea. And what, I, what I mean by freezing it is putting a layer in between this and that. And if we're freezing the underneath by putting this other little permafrost over the top. The permafrost being the collage medium. Just make sure with your mat, whatever you're using, if you're not using this um, or one of mine, that it is a really, really matte, matte medium and that you like the way watercolour and other stuff that you might want to use on top of it works. This one's been developed for me. So it works with watercolour and pencil and everything else. But some don't. So, you know, there's freezing and there's freezing. We don't want hypothermia, we just, <laughs> nothing else can happen um, and she turns blue. No, we want, we want uh, a cooling off period. Oh, see how it struggles there, but that's when you've got to go, okay, well that, that's the reality of it. It's going to do that and do we like it anyway? That's the other thing. Do, uh, is it something we can cope with anyway? Is it a big deal if it isn't frozen completely? Now let me see. I, I think we'd, we need a little bit of uh, light in the eyes here. Just to see if they're even. The easiest way for me to start to tell if the eyes are giving what I want is to just start fleshing them out a little bit and then I can see if they're not even enough because in that very sketchy form everything's fine but then when you start to tighten things up a little that's when we start to notice oh okay one eye's here and one eye's there and then I ask myself does that annoy me if it annoys me I can change it if it doesn't annoy me I just will leave it so I'm going to trixie these by lifting this one up a rather than moving one whole eye they're both in eye spot, they're both fine. So I'm going to lift this one up a little bit and I'm going to drop this one down a little bit. And between the two, we will get where we want to. So I do have to keep in mind that acrylic's not completely dry. It's so humid here. Everything's going to take a little bit of extra time to dry, even though it's hot. And then that will make a massive difference as I go on. Actually, I'm going to use a brush tip Oop, because we are not ready. We're not dry enough yet. Get a finer brush. Oh, this brush. 
and what did I oh no I had a little bit of the layer cake in there that really bright green yeah sea urchin let's do that just having a look at questions hey Debbie how are you going um Jenny no the incredible inks that are some are dye others are pigment no, uh, some are mixtures <laughs> And also, some are uh, the formula, um, you know, there, it's a little bit of a secret, you know, that's part of their fabulousness. Uh, so, no, I've got, there's dyes, there's pigments. Um, the way to think of it is the pigments are the heavy things, the, the dyes are anything that's brightly coloured is going to have probably some sort of dye in it. Not always. But broadly speaking, just have to um, open the gate. Just one second. Sorry, Bertha. My mum's just arrived, so the little dogs will probably pop off. And I'll, I'm going to make her not look so angry. I'm going to add this colour over the top. She's she's matching her eyeshadow to her eyes just to help that little eye pop out. Now, what colour could I give over this bright colour? Unless I want to actually paint a skin tone over the top. I don't know. I kind of like her in these purples. But if that was your skin colour, so say it was beige, how would I... I would use, you know, maybe a darker brown or a darker version of that beige colour to... You know me, I would use purple. Um, so, having said that, I just want it to stand out, but I'm going to have to make it lighter rather than darker because I'm getting into some darker colours here. So as I would with a darker skin tone, rather than uh, making things... Well, that one's not dark enough to explain what I'm talking about. But with a darker skin tone... Sometimes I'll use a lighter colour to pull the features out, like I've done over the top there. So I'm, I'm going to do that with this. Like it's the light hitting the side. Otherwise it just it gets darker and darker and you just can't see any of the details. And I've already got that depth in there, so I just want... I can get the details happening with... using this and the colour that I've used, I can't even remember now, was it purple, was it lilac? Because I've got this colour here, it just looks sort of whitish, but it's really this beautiful lilac colour. I think that's what I used. And I might even use that as my little highlight, which just sounds crazy because I've used that as my dividing a colour to divide the face, but it's the light just hitting the side of the face that we're looking at there. Just to try and get a little bit of volume. I might just see if I can bring the camera down a little bit because, and I've turned my paper because her face is tilting down. It'll help me keep her features from levelling up to this. I'll, just, I'll try and keep them uh, level. level to me rather than the bottom of the paper here hello I'm just doing a video <laughs> now I'm ready to put this back in oh no let's do a little bit of black there is that dry not quite we'll just give that a minute
It's like doing a little operations here and there. I'm concentrating very hard. <laughs> Oh yes, that's nice. This brush, yum. But I think her lips, I, I need to have a nicer colour for that. But if I use a, a red or a pink, it's just going to disappear in there. So I'm, I'm doing a video. I'm live. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. How are you going? Shall I say hello to everyone? Uh, there's no camera. Yes, you can say hello, but they Hi. can't hear you. I'm just saying hello. <laughs> That's Liz. That's beautiful work. Oh, actually, the white little highlight looks nice. So I'm going to do that. And I might do a very light. Let's do a little bit of a light. Oh, I wonder what would happen if I put yellow there. Might be a bit odd as a highlight. But it'll stand out like it's just a very light yellow. Hmm. I'm going to use some of this yellow as a highlight. So again, that's the incredible ink with the white gouache and just mixing it with a little toothpick. And uh, I just watched a YouTube video and did that, it didn't take very long. And uh, what, I sh what I should do is do them in a pan like this, but no, no, I'm happy with them in my little I don't have to have everything homogenized. I can have every. I can have things here, there, everywhere. But what I want you to notice is that when I'm putting the whites on here, these lighter colours, they are sitting up on top of all of this bright business. They're not getting eaten up like what was happening here. See how that is staying blue and opaque and sitting up on top? It's because I've frozen that layer. That's maybe not going to like. There is going to be a little bit of softening and bleeding of the colour underneath. But only not much. It's still pretty bright. There you go. I'm just doing it. So because I've got this, oh no no, should I go? Um, should we, we'll stick with this. We'll stick with this. Well, sort of. I'm just looking for the best colour. I don't need to set any rules for myself, really. I'm going to use a warmer pink for the lips to help them stand out. Let's see, I just want to see how that looks. Pop that in the eyes. So that looks very orange, even though it's quite coral, but that's just because of the colours that are happening. I wonder what will happen if I use this colour. Or should I use a cool colour? I'll start with this and if I don't like it I could actually add water and take it off completely if I don't if it's not what I want but this isn't going to stand out very much these lighter pinks but maybe I don't want them to Oh, I can, I'm using this really deep colour here to just add a little bit of um, definition but not call attention to the, the line itself, just uh, a bit of definition to the face. Come up a bit higher there. This is what I mean by adding water because we're on the acrylic. Once it's dry, I can just take it off a little bit like that. Anything I wanted up there. Oh, this is fun. 
it, like getting a little face to appear out of here is going to be quite the thing. Now maybe her little face is in, maybe that her hair comes down in front of her ear, actually. Might do that, yes. And a nice way to get to separate these two out with keeping still keeping this bright. As long as this is dry, bone dry, pencils are a nice um, thing. So I can just subtly change the colour, either warm it up or cool it down. I'm not sure which though. But I do need it to be bone dry or the paper's just not going to like it. Um, I wonder if I should cool it down or warm it up but I could stain it too make that more purple in there I'm just going to play with pencil for a little minute just to see if that's what I want because that's already quite purple in there I'm going to add a bit more purple to this And I'm going to add more pink to the face. Is this dry enough? If it's not dry enough, I, we won't. Um, that's not the pink. I wonder if this will be the pink. Yeah. I'm going to give that a little bit longer to dry too. Um, I want to get a bit of brighter pink on the face. The other thing I could do is add that with this. Might be this pink here. Because the colour that's under there is just random, it's not uh, picked on purpose. I don't have to keep it like that. Hmm, I might do a few little layers of that and then maybe make that darker. Even add this uh, darker blue in here. Hmm. quite like her because uh, look at all the time I'm spending already straight down into the details I'll frame her eye with an eyebrow always um, brings yeah it's the frame of the eye Oh, thank you for saying hello to my mum. Oh, lovely. Oh, the YouTube commercial. Sorry about that. Yes. Um, otherwise, it just, you know, the algorithm completely ignores you. So they, I, I put it in as the lowest uh, setting to try and alleviate that. But I did have a request, I noticed, on my um, Facebook page to say um, people would like more timely notifications, which is fair enough. But as you know, this is a bit... When I come on and do this as random, I was so grateful as anyone here with me doing it, because I'd do it anyway. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really... I'm just fitting it in amongst what... Um, in, I sort of don't consider this work. I'm just coming down here and having a play and I, I was reading all about this subscription sort of model thing that I could do and that's where it would all be formalised but you would, you know, have to pay for it and then it becomes like my work, you know, and I, we, it's a certain time and 
um, so you trade the freeness with more formalization and I suppose I should ask you what you guys uh, would like anyway I'm it's just I'm investigating to see what that is all about anyway So what happens if she has, so then I would like have an actual lesson plan, I guess, I don't know. You can sort of do that here on YouTube and have super chats and this and that, but my channel's not really big enough for all of that sort of thing, I don't think. And sounds like a lot of pressure for me. Yeah, so ch ch give me your opinion on uh, things. <laughs> yes, because very often I just decide, oh yeah, I can fit in, I'll do a, I'll go and do a bit of a live, I'll go and do a little bit of that. No, nope, now I've dropped a bit of water there. So that will let her dry for a minute. She's just going to be appearing out of the... bushes. <laughs> this is not the right colour for her hair when I look at it now. Uh, at all. And I really need... Oh yes, I'm, th I'm feeling this. Maybe these two mix. This is uh, the food truck palette from Lay Cake. A bit of a bigger brush. Oh, I've got a puppy hair. Just take that off. And I've got little Zorro who has to go and see a specialist tomorrow because he's got something wrong with his leg. He's got floating patellas knee joints <gasps> that color. but that really does draw attention to itself doesn't it but does that matter then I just have to work on getting the attention you know here on her other features as well and that's all right Have to be careful of, you know, showing off the beautiful hairs, though. I was just thinking of Medusa. The gods noticed, or a god noticed, her beautiful hair. And she, end result, she got turned into Medusa. that dry oh gosh I like it but well, I did like my idea of having I just feel like there should be something going around there but I'm not sure what yet I'll just let that ferment in my mind so see how the colors are sitting differently on this side of the page and this side of the page because this has got the matte medium on it so this orange under here is going to eat the colour up and this one's got a much better chance of just sitting on top for a bit longer, you know, and drying the way um, it looks when I pop it down. So vivid like that. Gorgeous. And if I want it really turquoisey, then I can just come in with another. Because also when you're putting any of the matte mediums, when you a medium over thing, it's not just a layer that sits on top, it is settling in. And sometimes with some of these really bright colors, it, it becomes part of that matte medium. So it can still travel through. 
um, or gobble up the colour. That's the fascinating thing about colour, but there's always something you can do about it. Just keep working. Also, be open to the idea of what you actually have happening in front of you might be even better than what you imagined in the first place. So it might you might be getting something that's not what you thought you were going to be getting, but it might actually be a better solution. So it's a nice um, frame of mind just to keep open to the fact that you could have you may have just created a better solution for yourself not get too tied up with what it is that you are having your mind just keep open to the reality all we'll see it like you can't pre you, you you can't really predict what's going to happen with colors mixing there's something very nice happening in here it's, it's a little bit sheer where the other colors are gobbling things up and just looking quite nice I'm going to do use turquoise here too, I think. This ear is very high for this width of face. So do I just come out a little bit more, give her a bit more width, give her a bit more. I've got room, soften this, uh, this up. I could drop that ear just down a little, just so it's not as distinct. It's not about the ear. You can always build that up a little bit more. I just want to give myself room to paint some eyes, really. I'm going to, to grab a little bit of this and that. I was going to put the eyes here, you see where I'd done this little dip, but I don't think that's right. I'm going to build the eye up here with the fringe and the, have the face not so turned. Eyebrows are going to be disappearing up under there. Let's just have a look at this. Big eyes. Oh yum, having this other colour. <gasps> oh, I'm getting a lime green happening there. This is the side that doesn't have the matte medium so everything's reacting. And let's have the eyes looking right at us. Well, actually, they're looking off a little bit to the side. This is going to go purple, I think. Just because red and blue make purple. This eye is angry. <laughs> She's very owl-eyed at the moment. But we've just started. And let's go purple for the under the nose just here so I can start building in. Oh, so this eye is close. Okay, so I just need to, I'm going to build that out there a little bit more. Okay. So I've got that purple mixing with the yellows and oranges. I'm getting a brown, like a neutral. And let's have blue lips for the time being because none of these are real colours. But this will stand out just as I'm starting to build a bit of a crazy face here. I think we'll even have this. This is going to make a little bit of a mess here, but I need to move this blue. So I'm just going to just tip this top. It's going to just remove a little bit of the undercolor as well, but I can put that back on. Oh, yum, the tattoo ink, the neon pink is there. Jenny said, stick with being free and fun. Yes, that's my um, natural 
uh, thing. But in that case, it just stays uh, <laughs> random. <laughs> I'll try and do a better job of working out when I'm going to do things, but it's, it's hard when you when it's random, isn't it? But I, you know, always open to ideas and things. Now see this ear is completely, I need more space, this ear is going to be in the wrong spot. So if I just add that, that can just become a little bit of the painting, but I can just move uh, the ear back and I'll do that with a little bit of this blue, this slush puppy. So let's... Um, And to, maybe she doesn't have ears is the other thing. Well, she will have ears somewhere, but she doesn't have to have them on display. Gosh, that, that red that's underneath there is just hungry and eating everything I put on there. Nom nom nom. <laughs> I'm going to do a pencil. I just need to draw. And I don't want to use lead pencil. The other one is, that's a good one in this situation is fluffy white clouds. So I'm going to raise this completely but it's going to stand out on something as bright as this. So I'm kind of really liking this. This is her face, okay. And uh, so this is the pencil you can order for free when you put in an order. And you just can add it to your order. And you have to sharpen it with a blade. You can't sharpen it with a sharpener. So if you get it, you completely understand. That's why. And. Uh, So all of this blue business here, I'm going to have to take off. So I'll, I'll get a little bit of a halo, but that red is going to... Um, we won't be able to see it anyway, I don't think. It'll be fine. Because the red would really have stained the paper. See, it is lifting off, but there's, it's so intense that... Uh, as long as the paper doesn't mind it, which the paper is fine, um, I could just come in and gently just give it a little facial like that, a little scrub. I'm even going to give this a little move, you know, because uh, I kind of like it, so I'm, I'm, I want to make it uh, good. In fact, this putting it on and knocking it back is actually quite a cool effect. We're always discovering things. Now, what won't work is me putting the this over white. It, it'll go on, but there's nothing like how it goes on dry paper. Okay, so if with this is her, let's build the face a little bit. This is her. I want to push that back a bit. I want to push this over here a little bit more because it's not that turned. We would even see a little bit of extra nostril. That highlight is actually going to be this way further. Middle of her mouth is about correct. But that's all okay. That's the middle of her chin. We've got this happening. I need to push that eye over so that's fine. Um, going to have to do that now though so that my um, eye isn't tricked anymore. I'm going to pull her 
iris back over this way a little bit more and so this eye we want it just right bang in the middle okay I think that's about right So we need a bit of space and then we've got hair and then we've got ear and that doesn't look quite right. I'm going to look at her for a minute now that she's dry and just give my eyes a break from her because she's just I need to just give my eyes a break so I can just keep going oh actually because I've got a bit of neon happening here shouldn't she have a bit of neon so I'm going to use cotton candy so this is the um, food truck I've got another neon pink that's nice I've also got the pinkiosity palette which could be a fun one too um, so that's not that's not what I've worn. I want this, I think. Okay, so that looks okay for a highlight. And maybe if I mix these two. And just build this up a little bit. And then I'll add her cheeks back again. And her shadows back again. But I'll set this dry off first so that will just settle down a little as it dries at the moment it looks tricky because you can see the water uh, but we'll just I want it to be a bit more harmonious now this poor creature oh my gosh Am I brave enough to go in with, rather than go in with black, I'm going to, I really should let it dry and then, because the thing I liked the most was this, the little subtle details of this and I've moved away from that so I might have to do that uh, another time or I'll just add that on here. Oh, I've got a bit of the chalk on my pen, that's all right, I'll just do that. So we're going to move that over here, I need to let that dry. Where's my pencil? Um, yes, construction, that's what we have happening. Okay. And I've just been invited by YouTube to, with, uh, you can have memberships. So I've got some videos, some channels that I follow. Uh, perfume and other things. And that's got a membership per month. And then there's like little benefits you can add. I don't know. Again, I think it's really for people with huge channels. And, you know, that's their, you know, income. Whereas, like I said, mine's sort of for fun. <laughs> oh, yum. But rather than green, maybe I should be doing more of a blue. And, yeah, probably have to be more organised, that sort of thing. Yeah.
Imagine I don't even like doing edited videos because it's too much pressure. Well, too much work. Sitting around editing videos. I've just got other things I'd rather do. I love doing these ones. Right. So this is not dry enough for me to use a pen on other than this. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can go candy dippers or ultimate pens. Okay, this is going to be good. Right. Sometimes I dip these in water first so that I get a lighter blue. This is going to be quite dark, but I think I need to move this eye over because it's completely not um, doing what I need it to do at this point. I need to get it out of her nose. Um, so we've got... Uh, I might give her a little bit more of a flare to the nostrils. This is going to be her little nostril under here. I've turned the nose a bit too much. Okay. So I've got, if I build her nose in here and the no, this comes back, then her eye is actually in her nose. And it will be too, um, just won't look balanced. The face just won't look balanced. I've already got that swinging a bit far, but maybe that's just what, sometimes you've got to let the painting, like I said before, the painting tells you sometimes, if we call this a painting, a drawing. Oh, no, we're still, that's a bit too wet. But by getting the eyes sort of in, it just helps me work out what's going on elsewhere, you see. And I'm pushing that eye back. This, I've got to let this nose roll this way. I've got to let that roll that way. That's coming here, that's rolling there, this is coming here. A little bit of white there. And I'm just starting to get a little bit of volume now. paint pen because it's got the brush tip if everything's not completely dry and all of that as long as they you know don't have it coated with everything else that's Jess arriving home um, it's going to be it's going to look quite nice but oh this is Angus I needed some more gouache oh thank you Hey, and some violet syrup. <laughs> There's not many what? Oh, <gasps> really? Okay, I need a few more. <laughs> yeah, the incredible ink in the scented formula is we're getting low on things. So I'm, um, um, yeah, if you uh, need a little stash of those. That's what you need to just pick out your, your colours that you love. Because uh, once they're gone, that'll be that for those one particular ones. We've got other gorgeous things, but everything, you know, has its own. Everything's a little bit different. Now, we put this to bed clean. See how that's got colour on it. So then when I go to use this as a white dot in the eye, it just it won't be a white dot in the eye, it'll be a white with purple and this and that. 
So this is the, um, this dries waterproof. And the reason I use the blue is just because I've got a lot happening here. If I put the black on there, it's going to look very, I do still want to build in volume. If I use black on there, it'll flatten things out, make things look very cartoonish, uh, just flatten it out. And I still, it's going to be hard for me to build volume in something crazy like this, but I know I can do it. I know it can be done. Uh, I just have to um, approach things. Uh, you know, bit by bit. I'm going to leave the little red cracks, little edges. She sort of looks like a bit elfin or something, doesn't she? Till we get the hair in there, and I can always add black uh, as we go. These little details that I really loved at the beginning, I can hardly see because there's all of the I've got metallic I've got darker colors happening I can come over with something darker and make that stand out I could even come in and color them in um, but or I can just say okay that's a I love that idea and I can have that as something for another time even you know Okay, so that's the middle of her face now. Okay, things are changing. And should we keep with the blue lips? I'm not sure. What about pink? No, they'll disappear. Green? No, although I do have these aquas, but I do have these nice aqua blues and things. I might go in with aqua blue again. Okay, but I'm just deciding what to do. What about my little aqua where I started? Oh, these little brushes were so cute. It's a little pop-up brush, like a lipstick brush, but with watercolour fur. Except it's not fur, it's synthetic. Because we're not into hairs of the animal the brush. Hmm, I don't know if that's really what we want, but that is where we are at the moment. I'm just going to let that sit, sit with me. And I'm going to add this yellow. It will look white, but it is yellow. Over here, might go green. I'm still trying to send that eye back over that way a little bit. Quite like the yellow as the highlight, uh, actually, rather than white. See, normally I would say, no, I need to maybe knock that background back a bit, but I kind of like that she's just so bright. She's softening there. Just add a little bit of colour to those cheeks. I'm going to use the uh, little shorty brush. I'm not sure if this will be the thing, but I just want to add a little bit of subtle pink, but it might not be. Oh, yeah, there we go. If I'm going to add pastel, I definitely need to use a fixative over the top at some point. Just, uh, just building up a bit of a pink there rather than adding the pink paint on there. And in fact, why don't I? Is that dry? I'm just going to deepen up this colour in the cheek here as well. 
This does have a little bit of shimmer in it. <gasps> the gold uh, highlight. Oh, I have to wait for that to dry. Oh. Just before I go crazy with it everywhere. Oh, that's very interesting. Layer Cake does grab the pastel. So this is one of the uh, shimmer pastels. I don't think we've got any of the palette pastels left, but a lot of you have the palette pastels. I need to do some more colours in those at some point. So if she's got all these dangle dangles, dangulations, and I'm loving this. It's sort of giving mermaid uh, sea creature. Beauteous sea creature. I'm going to go, I'm going to keep it light with this little guy. Oh, putting her through the ringer. Sorry, love. I wonder, should it be, I think it should be dripping hair. I don't think we're going up. I think we're dripping. I think we're dripping. Yes, we are. Um, Going to be coming down yeah let's do that down behind the shoulder so I can get some depth in here and that will help define her so I'm just going to do that with pencil like that and then this is going to come down here now so before I add anything there I'll just see if I can because I've got pastel there and the paper is a little bit wet so I have to be gentle but I'm just taking off my pastel rather than using my hand let's use this I've got paint pen there that's not going to go anywhere so um, I kind of like this um, That eye is just too squared off there. I'll work that out. She would have eyebrows under here. And that needs to come over this bit of white that's happening here, like a little um, tears. So actually, I'll let them be tears if that's what it looks like. Let it be what it is. Lean into it. Oh, the paper is very fragile there. It just told me to back off. Mm, yep. And yet I'm still fussing with it. Lilac. She is the goddess of colour or something. I don't know what she's the goddess of, but it's something. This is not the colour. Hello. Oh yes, it's too hot out there. Yeah, come and if you want to bring a chair okay. to watch, but uh, yeah. the, there's no. I haven't got a video. Okay. Um, the camera doesn't work. So this particular paint pen here, this is the one that's it's on its last little legs, I guess, but I get really nice little um, brush strokes. So even though it's a bit trashed, I was just a bit too harsh with it, it's fantastic. So sometimes the trashed ones are my favourite. 
just because they don't give a perfect line. So they fit in with everything else that's not perfect, just a little bit more, if you know what I mean. There's a lot of imperfection going on. And see, even these white acrylic that I'm putting on, it's, it's going pink. That's because that red is just gobbling it, gobbling it, gobbling it up. And it is what it is. What do you think? So that, I'm going to bring that line down here. Yeah, so it's just like how do we, yeah, we've got that intense background creating something on top of it is uh, the next challenge. Even like this, all these colours. Uh, I think I can bring that eye in a little bit like that. Getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, that should be yellow rather than white. If you can hear some little tip taps, that's the dogs. And again, just. We put the pen away clean. How hot is it out there? Already is it boiling? Out there? Oh, Brutal. Just so hot. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's 26 degrees, feels like 30. Yeah. Yeah, at least. Feels like 60 million. Okay, and then this we're going to, so that'll be the top of her head there, so we've got her don't have to put in every line, but this is the side of her. If I bring these lines straight with a little bit of, not too much curve, it'll make the hair look wet and dripping. And if I keep it fairly thin. But if she's a goddess, she doesn't, gravity doesn't apply. So these are the considerations. But I don't like that at all. Oh, so I've got mere seconds to move that. I doubt if I can even. I can soften that off a little bit. But oh, down here it's not gone. And then that's waterproof. Beautiful. So what is it that I don't like? I like this. Yeah, I like all this. Or should it be neater? I'm not sure. Oh, see, that's giving, just having a little bit here is giving it. How loud is laminated floors? Oh, oh my goodness, mate. They don't tell you that when you get them. I'm going to leave this for the time being, I think, and I'm going to uh, welcome my mum properly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I need, like, eyes need to have a little break. But gosh, this journal is really, this is the year of colour. We are really uh, colourful. Full colour, that was the watercolour. Um, 
that was the Euphoria. And then this is all of the gessos. When we were playing around with those the others, just a bit of this and that. Uh, this was our in the city. I've painted over the face a bit more, added a bit more of the gouache. Again, that pink in the background's eating, eating, eating. But I'm um, just put another little layer of the tinsel mixed with um, the go go gouache, and just I put in a darker arm for the time being, and then I will. Add the lighter layer. I'm just trying to move her arm back so it doesn't look so out of proportion because I like her. So I'm just getting her to the point where it doesn't annoy me. So I've got a brand new <gasps> Blinded by the Light white go go gouache, and I'll put in some little extra lines uh, with her. Ooh. Yeah, just by moving, bringing her arm in, I'm hoping to. Just help those proportions a little. So arm isn't so, I don't, it doesn't annoy me. I'm just getting everything to the point where it doesn't annoy me. Again, just cleaning off my pen. And here you can see I've just added in some little subtle building details as we, as I build up a little bit of a city happening. And, uh, it's so hard to stop. It's so hard to stop. What's that saying? Time flies when you're having fun. So then I'll let that darker part uh, become her, the shadow of the arm, and this will be the highlight. Still a bit of a spaghetti. Oh, we'll get there in the end. <laughs> This is the good thing about having stuff that's got a bit of opacity is we can keep just working on things until it's exactly as we want. Oh, look, she's smiling now. Oh, I'm, I like that much better because she's, you know, in the city. She's just landed a dream job. She can't wait to get home, call everyone. Everyone will be proud. On the way home, she bought some gold boots to celebrate. <laughs> and she's got her portfolio slash comfort bag. <sighs> I've chucked under the arm. Okay. And that was the Dr. Ink with a little bit of the uh, incredible ink mixture that we popped in there the other day. And uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll see what happens with her. And uh, I will say goodbye. I'll do a little, <laughs> bye. Oh, Liz, people can see you. Goodbye. <laughs>